Section 5.5, .5, Mixed Property Problems. In these four problems, 16, 17, 20, and 22, we're going to be using a combination of all the exponent rules learned so far. So when you're first starting these problems, you might find it helpful to get an index card and write down all the exponent rules that are listed in the textbook or the multimedia textbook in Section 5.5. .5. It's somewhere near the end of the section. Get an index, index card, write down those rules, and just have them right next to you as you're going. Now every time you get a problem, you want to look at it and just see if there are any rules that you can apply and just attack it step by step, one rule at a time, until you get something that can't be simplified anymore. So number 16, we have 5 cubed to the 4th over 5 to the 5th. Well, the first thing I see is that the two bases are the same, but we can't go right to using the quotient rule because we've got some extra stuff happening in the numerator. We've got a parentheses with another power. So right away we're going to use the product, I mean the power rule, which tells us that if we have a base raised to a power and another power, we're going to multiply the powers together. So power to power multiply. And that gives us 5 to the 12. All right, so right there we're going to do the 3 times 4. And that's one of the power rules. Just carry along this guy. Now we're okay to use the quotient rule because we have a base to a power, the exact same base to a power. So that means we can keep the base, subtract the exponents. So we end up with 5 to the 7. Number 17, here we have a bunch of same bases. So always keep an eye out for same bases. Same bases being multiplied means add the exponents. That's the product rule. So we're going to go ahead and keep the base, add the exponents. Minus 5 plus 7 plus or minus 8 or subtract 8 either way. So that gives us minus 5 plus 7 is a 2 and then 2 minus 8 is minus 6. So x to the minus 6 and we can't have a negative exponent in our final answer, so we're going to go ahead and shift it down. 1 over x to the 6th six, power is the final answer there. So next is number 20. Okay, number 20 has a lot of stuff going on. So, I notice that there are two different same bases. We've got m's, we've got n's, and that we can't hop right to the quotient rule because we have stuff going on in the numerator. So the first thing we're going to want to do is use a power rule that tells us that two bases being multiplied all raised to a power both get that power. So exponents distribute over multiplication. This first one, m cubed, is being raised to the minus fifth power to power, multiply the exponents. So that becomes m to the minus 15. And then n is to the 1 power, even though it doesn't show a 1, the 1 is there. So I have power to power multiply, so n to the minus 5. And the other two guys on the denominator just tag along. Now that we've distributed and gotten rid of the parentheses, we can go ahead and use the quotient rule for the same bases that we have here. So let's start with the m's. m to the, always do top minus bottom, minus 15 minus a minus 2, n to the minus 5, take away 7. So that gives us, add the opposite, minus 15 plus 2, m to the minus 13, n to the, add the opposite, minus 5 and minus 7 is minus 12. Both of those have negative exponents, which we don't want, so we're going to shift them both to the denominator. We get 1 over m to the 13, n to the 12. And number 22. Okay, number 22 also has a bunch of stuff happening. 
And there are several ways you can approach it. You can first shift and get rid of negatives. You can first distribute this exponent in to all the things that are being multiplied together. Uh, generally, if you're not too sure where to start, probably the best thing to do is to distribute this outside exponent to the inside because everything's being multiplied together. It's okay to do that. So that's one of our power rules. So give this to numerator and denominator and leave the shifting of negative exponents for the very end of the problem. So then let's go ahead and give everybody the negative 4 exponent. 3 to the negative 4. Now 3 has a 1 exponent, so we're going to multiply power to power 1 times minus 4. We don't want to do 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. All right, because we have a power raised to a power, we need to multiply the exponents x to the minus 2 times minus 4 is 8, y to the minus 4 times minus 4 is 16, over 2 to the minus 1 times minus 4 is 2 to the 4, z to the 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. And I don't really need those parentheses anymore because we got rid of the exponent on the outside. And now we look for same bases. There aren't any. We have a 3, we have a 2, an x, y, and a z. No same bases, so we can't use any product or power rules. I mean, product or quotient rules. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of negative exponents. And be careful here that the only thing that shifts is an item with a negative exponent. So 3 to the minus 4, the 3 is going to come down. It becomes 3 to the 4 x to the 8 stays where it is. y to the 16 stays where it is. 2 to the 4 stays where it is. z to the 16 moves up. Becomes positive. And now you can either leave it in this format or sometimes the software in my math lab likes to have just integers. So we could uh, do out 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 9, times 9 is 81. So x to the 8, y to the 16, z to the 16 over 81 times 2 to the 4, 4 times 4, 16. And then break out a calculator, which I don't have here, and get a final answer for your integer. And that would be our final answer.